Africa is the world's youngest continent with more than half of the population under 25 years old of age. Since most African countries rely on agriculture as their main source of income, involving the youth is an imperative. Experts agree that a strong involvement of Africa's youth in rural development, agriculture and natural resources management will boost food security in the continent. However, young people remain almost invisible, which is a critical threat to food security. Joining us live is Obiachulu of Farm Crowley from Nigeria, and also joining us live from Ghana is Michael Kudo of Farmer. Thank you for joining us on the news. Thank you, Thank you for having me. Are we having enough conversations around the youth engagement in the agricultural sector? I don't think so. We are not having enough conversation about uh, the youth getting into agriculture. And uh, this has been because if you look at most of the policies that have been done for agriculture in Africa, also in the individual countries, it has not been in a way that has championed the youth involvement at all. Here in Ghana, there have been some attempts to develop some policies to get the youth into agriculture. And uh, this has seen some light as well as some challenges because the policies were not deliberate enough. Now, in, in discussing the issues of farming as an occupation, um, how deliberate do we have to be about this? We need to be deliberate about it because at the moment, most of our attractions we've done to push agriculture to the fore has been singing the narrative of comparative advantage, which um, very soon we are going to lose it because the definition of comparative advantage has changed. And if we are still sitting in our comfort zone of having land, water as the main source of agriculture, then we will lose it because technology is actually driving it. So we should actually be deliberate enough to get the youth to get interested in agriculture so that uh, it, it will be attractive uh, alternative rather than the rural migration into the cities. Now, should it start in our courses, taught our schools? What do you say to that? Um, teaching it at school is not enough if the practicality is not there. The exposition to... Um, the modern ways of agriculture and also exposing the youth to the various value chains will be more attractive than just doing the normal deliberate agricultural lessons and sending them to the fields to see how it's done. Because you will realize that uh, although the West especially does not have a lot of investment in agriculture, um, they control about 50% of the agricultural production in the world because they don't do agriculture as we do it with strength, but they also deploy technology and adoption of a high yielding variety as against us trying to do the agriculture in the rudimental way. Um, are you able to influence this evolution in youth engagement? How do you think we go about it? I think the youth should be exposed to the modern agricultural technology, they should be engaged to see why they are not getting into agriculture. Enough literature exists to indicate that land has become one of the main challenges why the youth are not getting into agriculture because of land grabbing in the cases where the big companies are getting into grab the land. In the case of land litigation, when the youth don't find it attractive enough to have a proper tenor system to own their own land, to do proper forecasting for what kind of investment they may even chance on to do the agriculture. Now, what, what progress have you seen where your interventions are concerned? Um, interventions as in what I am doing currently? Yes, please. Good. Um, at the moment, I have a farm. And uh, I started it uh, when I finished my first degree in biochemistry since 2000. And I have been deliberate enough to make sure that it's full of the youth. We deploy a lot of modern technologies, drip irrigation, spraying with drone. Apart from that, I also get involved in alternative livelihood trainings for people in the western part of Ghana to adopt modern agricultural technology. 
and it will surprise you to see that most of the people does, do not even know that seasonality challenges can be overcome using modern agricultural practices. And all these are uh, things that have been researched and perfected in literature, but unfortunately, our education system does not expose them to us good enough for us to adopt it. Now, let me come to Mr. Kenner, please. Do you think we can do this without the government? And what role should the government be playing when it comes to agriculture? So I think that um, all, all stakeholders have um, a crucial role to play when it comes to agriculture. Um, like uh, Michael said, you know, we need to engage the youths. What are the best ways to engage youths in agriculture? What's the role that the government has to play? Um, which areas of the value chain do we think that they can um, play a crucial role in? You know, the attractiveness of agriculture as um, a mainstay or something that they can call an occupation for themselves. It's, it's the role of governments to play in um, ensuring that the enabling environment and the regulatory framework um, is put in place. So um, I, I think government's role is to ensure that the infrastructural networks um, and the regulatory framework uh, frameworks are all intact to ensure that um, we're able to encourage the youth to partake in agriculture. And in talking about encouraging the youth in participating in agriculture, many youth still don't find agriculture quite as an incentive, something they really want to be part of. How do we begin to correct this and encourage more youth participation in agriculture, Kenneth? Well, I think it's more. Of, I think it's more of a perception issue. Right, um, like uh, Michael rightly said, um, we don't see agriculture as um, something that is, um, permit me to use this word, sexy enough, right? We need to ensure that we, we make people see that agriculture can be um, an occupation. It can be something that you, you should love to want to uh, um, you know, associate yourself with. And, and what do you think you is know, largely, what, what largely is attributed to that? What would you say largely attributes to that? Why the youths don't find it interesting and you know, attractive enough to be part of the process. I think one of the things that we've failed to do is we've not shown the youth where the money is. I mean, I belong to this generation where we feel as though um, we're moved by the money, right? We're moved by what's happening. We're moved by um, that um, feeling of wanting to do more, impact our generation, right? We have not shown um, that agriculture can be that sector where you can make an impact to the world. We have not shown that agriculture can be lucrative enough. We have not shown role models around who is doing agriculture big time and is between the ages of 20 and 35. You know, who is that role model that we want to put forward to the people, you know, to my generation, to our generation, to show that agriculture can be done in a better way. You know, we need to change this um, philosophy around agriculture is about using holes and cutlasses. Agriculture is about, you know, hard, deliberate work. Agriculture is about cultivation. The entire value chain is agriculture. It starts from production, goes to marketing, goes to processing, goes to even more um, communications, goes to tech, you know. So we need to be able to build this and communicate largely to the youth that these are various attractive points that they can partake in in agriculture and not just the hard parts of it. Kenneth, Mr. Kenneth and Michael, thank you very much for your time and for joining us on the news. Thank you.